Recently, I was asked, what am I looking forward to most as a priest? And often the, the answer would be celebrating Mass, but it was deep down in my heart, for some reason, I just had to say, it's confession. And some people, I know I've definitely heard my story, I just want to share it again with a couple different uh, perspectives on that. I grew up here, and uh, since a young age, I'd planned to be a professional golfer my whole life, and, and I'd always thought of my faith growing up as something that I'd just get back into when I was really old. Uh, it's like the fire insurance late in life that I would just kind of leave it off into the last minute and then just use it uh, whenever I wanted to. And when I was in university in the States playing college golf, uh, it was a really, a really difficult time in my life. It was, it was almost reflecting back on it like five years of just darkness in which golf was not going very well. And I was just trying whatever I possibly could to fill that void that golf wasn't meeting. We have, we have a huge desire in our heart for, for happiness, for joy. And when what we think will satisfy that desire no longer does, we're just going to be in, in a mad search for anything to fill that, that void in our life. And for me, it was just the classic story of just going all out in the party scene. It's like trying to fill my life with whatever pleasure I possibly could. And for five years of my life, that was my story. Uh, so a lot of people on the outside would think that I just had everything together. I got a full ride scholarship. I lived in one of the wealthiest areas in, in East Bay, San Francisco. I got to play golf every day. I did well in school. But deep down inside, I was just a mess. And that was the story of my life. Until my last month of university, everything started to change. This girl that I was, I was dating, uh, her mom intervened in her life. And she asked her to read a book, Heaven is for Real. And she asked me to read this book as well. And I thought I wanted to get in the good books with her mom. So I'd read this book. And I remember reading it one day after it was a late night at the bars, and I just couldn't put this book down. And it's this children's book about going to heaven. And it was the first time in so long I started crying because it was like my childhood faith just awokened in me for the, for the first time in my life. And I started asking these really deep questions about the purpose of life, why I'm here, heaven, hell, what does it all mean? And at the same time, my mom sent me an email. She said, for my birthday this year, I don't want you to give me anything. I want you to go do something. I want you to go to confession. And for my mother, this was a huge request because I hadn't been to confession since I was kind of told to go in high school. So it had been about five years. I'd been away from the church and that experience of reading that book, Heaven is Real, all of a sudden gave me this kind of new hope that maybe confession could, could do something in my life. And so I'd come back home from university. I wanted a new start. I wanted a fresh beginning. And I had to fulfill my mother's request as well. So I remember going to this priest, and I said, I have no idea how to give a confession. Uh, it's been over five years. And I just lived the, this total party life in college. And I always remember his first question. He said, well, how many times have you gotten drunk since your last confession? And I'd, I'm a math guy, so I start thinking in my head, you know, it's like twice a week, uh, you know, 54 weeks in a year, five years. It's like, wow, you know, maybe over 500 times. And that was just the beginning of probably 20 to 30 minutes of speaking with this priest. Um, and when, I, when I, I remember so clearly kneeling down in front of this priest and hearing these words of absolution and just leaving in total confusion, like, 
Did all of that experience I had in college, did it all just get wiped away? Like, what actually just happened there? And I felt this freedom in my heart for the first time in my life as though I had these chains just wrapped around my heart. And that was the normal for my life. And I didn't even know what freedom felt like. And that experience of freedom just set my heart on fire. That it, it just made me want to, to be able to give that to other people. And it's just so much a part of who I am that I've prayed about this experience so much. And there's something that I wanted to share about this uh, that I've never shared before in public. A couple of years ago, I went on this eight-day silent retreat, and the spiritual director asked me to pray about this passage in Scripture where it talks about being ransomed from hell. Uh, and I went to the chapel. It was in the middle of this eight-day silent retreat, I was praying in front of this Divine Mercy image, uh, and all of a sudden, I just had this clarity that I was, imagine yourself sitting down in total darkness, like darker than any darkness you've ever had, and all of a sudden, you just realize you are all alone, and it is utter loneliness, utter desolation, and this is your state for all eternity. And I just sat with that realization that this was where I was at before that confession. This is where my life was destined to go. And all of a sudden, I felt this presence in front of me. Uh, and I, I remember opening my eyes and seeing this divine mercy image, seeing Christ truly in front of me, and in all the darkness, like everything is dark, except Jesus, and he opens his heart to me, and this divine mercy rays just flood through my whole being, and he just says, you are mine. You are mine. I wish I could give you this experience because to know that you've been a ransom from, from hell uh, is so life-changing. To know that Jesus would claim you as his own, to say, you are mine. That going to confession can change your destiny forever. Filled me with such deep gratitude that when the idea of being able to be that instrument in confession for someone else, to actually change the eternal destiny of a person, that is worth giving up everything for. So I'm very uh, eager to try my best to be an instrument of the Lord's mercy in confession. I just wanted to share three things that uh, kind of capture how I view confession. First is a new beginning. A new beginning. You know, Jesus instituted the sacrament of reconciliation at the upper room after the resurrection. And it says in John 20, when it was evening on that day, on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house of the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, 
they're retained. You know, Jesus had just had an experience of being risen from the dead. Jesus had just gone through that experience. And he wanted the apostles to also experience what it's like to be risen from the dead. And I really believe that instituting the sacrament of the reconciliation is one of the first things he did to the apostles after his resurrection was an experience that he wanted to give them. He wanted them to experience what it's like to have new life. And when, G- when it says that Jesus breathed on them, this word is about breathing creation, breathing new life. The only time this word's used is at the beginning of Genesis. It talks about God breathing new life into Adam. And so Jesus actually wants to give us a new beginning in confession, a new start. He says to St. Faustina, in coming to confession, we're a soul like a decaying corpse, so that from a human standpoint, there'd be no hope of restoration and everything would be lost. It's not so with God. The miracle of divine mercy restores that soul in full. How true this is, like we can come to confession dead inside or just in utter darkness and God's mercy triumphs over that. His divine mercy enters into our situation, brings us new life. One of my favorite stories, I'd read it one time, but I don't know where it's from. And if, you've, if you know the source, you can tell me is that there was this nun who was, uh, had a revelation of Jesus. And Jesus told this nun, I want you to build this church. And go tell the bishop that you have to build this church. She goes and tells the bishop, Jesus has appeared to me. He wants, me to, uh, he wants you to build a church. And so the bishop says, well, I need some proof. And the bishop thinks he's really clever. So he tells the nun, the only way I'm going to absolutely know for certain whether Jesus is really speaking with you is if you tell me what sins I confessed in my last confession. That's the only way I'll know for absolute certain if Jesus is actually talking to you. So the nun goes back. Jesus appears to her. They talk. And then the nun comes back to the, to the bishop and says, okay, I talked with Jesus. It's okay, what did he say? He doesn't remember anymore. He forgets. He doesn't remember anymore. You know, when I heard this story, it was like, is this actually true? That Jesus, all-knowing, omniscient, he doesn't remember anymore? Is that actually what happens in confession? That when you leave that confessional, those sins you confessed did not happen anymore? And I was praying about this right before this, and uh, I was thinking, okay, how does this happen? And the, the psalm, Psalm 130, 103, it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins from us. And Isaiah 43, he says, I who blot out all your sins for my own sake, remember your sins no more. You know, these are Old Testament prophecies. So how much more true would this actually be now with Christ, with what he's done? An absolute new start he wants to give you. You know, but often we leave the confessional And we still are burdened by our past sins. We still hold them on. We still, they can still come up in our memory without even trying. And I've been reading so much about divine mercy recently. And St. Faustina shares this story in which this sister came to her and this sister was really burdened by her past sins. And she doubted whether Jesus had actually forgiven her. And she begged Faustina to say Jesus, uh, to ask Jesus, because she says, Please, sister, ask him. I know that Jesus speaks to you, and so you can be the only one that will assure me whether my sins have been forgiven. And St. Faustina said that I'll pray for you. And St. Faustina goes to adoration that evening, and Jesus tells her, 
Tell her that the disbelief she has wounds my heart much more than the sin she committed. Tell her that the, her disbelief that all those sins are actually forgiven wounds my heart more than the sin she committed. And St. Faustina tells this to the sister, and she says that the sister began to cry like a child, and great joy entered her soul. You know, Jesus wants to give us this new beginning, and when we leave the confessional, he wants us to live in that newness. He wants us to actually live in the reality and the truth that what he has done is true in our lives. And we have that opportunity every time we go to confession. Another point, so we have this new beginning. Every confession is a new beginning. And the second point is an encounter with Christ. You know, confession is not just about a fresh start. Like often I go to confession and I have this list of sins and I just put it to the priest and it, okay, I'm kind of free and I can start again. But it's so much more than that as well. Every time we go to confession, it's a personal encounter with Jesus. And we have to really make this act of faith that when you walk in there and you, and you hear Father Nick, you hear Father Paul, it's actually Jesus. He says this to St. Faustina. Make your confession before me. The person of the priest is for me only a screen. Never analyze what sort of a priest it is that I'm making use of. Never. But open your soul in confession as you would directly to me. You know, we've got to make this act of faith that when we walk into that confessional, this is a real encounter with Jesus Christ, who's using the priest only as a screen, because he deeply wants you to be able to hear the words when it makes an, an effect in your soul that your sins are truly forgiven. I was, what, I was uh, listening to this talk from Father Chris Allaire, one of the missionaries of the Immaculate Conception who speaks about divine mercy. And he, he, talks, he tells a great story about Kevin James, who's this TV personality. Uh, he's in Mall Cop and all these other movies. And I was so amazed at this story that he told. He said, Kevin James was in a limo with two famous world comedians. And they were going uh, to something like the Golden Globes. And they were in this limo, just having this great time, laughing, joking around. And then all of a sudden, Kevin James yelled at the limo driver. He said, stop the car. Stop the car. And everyone's like, what? We have a place to go to. Like, he said, stop the car. And so they, OK, stop the car. And Kevin James runs out, and they see him run into this church. And 10 minutes later, he comes back. And he comes into the limo, and these other two actors look at him, and they're like, what just happened to you? He had this, like, glow on his face. And before, he shares that he was just depressed. He was just trying to put on a front. But he comes back in, and he's just got this, he's radiating to these other two actors. And they say, what happened to you? He said, you would be radiating like this too if Jesus just forgave all of your sins. You would be like this too if Jesus had just forgiven all your sins. And what a testimony to be able to be so certain that you've just had such an encounter with Christ that you can leave here and you can share that joy to anyone. That this has actually been a real encounter with Jesus Christ. Just one final point, so we have this opportunity for a new beginning. Confession is always an encounter with Christ. And the last point is that it's always a place of healing. One of the reasons why we always bring the same list over and over again to confession is because we don't fully get it. I don't fully get it, what Jesus is trying to do in confession. He wants to do much more than just forgive our sins. He wants to heal us. He wants to heal us. He wants to heal us of the attitudes, the disordered desires, the problems, the wounds, anything that is causing those repeated sins to happen. And when you, when you open up the catechism, confession, 
The Sacrament of Reconciliation is actually under the title of Sacrament of Healing. It's a sacrament of healing. That God wants to do much more than forgiveness. He's initiating a process of healing. And that's why when you read saints, time after time, they go to confession frequently. Because they realize you're continually being healed. And that's one of the beautiful things about confession. I know very holy men who have told me that they were going to confession every single day. And they were fighting that battle, and it was a continual process of healing. And what a testimony they can be to other people now, having experienced that healing. St. Faustina says this, we come to confession to be healed. We come to be educated like a small child. Our soul is in constant need of healing and education. And so as we transition into a time of adoration, an opportunity to go to confession, my prayer is that all of you just give yourself fully to this time. Hold nothing back. St. Faustina says, leave your entire past to God's mercy. Leave it all. This is an opportunity to hold nothing back, to give it all to Jesus.